Hi, I'm Jason Bellamy coming to you from CSM 2019 in Washington, D.C. We have 16,700 people here. Uh, it's an amazing conference and it's full of very smart people. And two of them are next to me, Alan Jetty, who's the editor-in-chief at PDJ, and Terry Ellis of Boston University. Um, they're gonna talk about Parkinson disease, Parkinson disease and movement and tele-rehabilitation. Uh, but before we can do that, we want to understand the context. So I mentioned PTJ. PTJ is the official scientific journal of the American Physical Therapy Association, and it includes podcasts. The conversation that they're about to have will be one of those podcasts. They have about two a month. So make sure if you're not uh, listening to those podcasts now that you find the PTJ podcast and listen. PTJ also has a new app that's available in the iTunes store, uh, so download that. Thanks, Jason. I want to welcome listeners and viewers to this special PTJ podcast. My guest today is Dr. Terry Ellis, who's Associate Professor uh, in the Department of Physical Therapy and Athletic Training at Boston University's Sargent College. Welcome, Terry. Thank you for having me, Alan. It's a pleasure Thank to be here. Thanks for doing this. Today we're going to talk about a study that Terry and her colleagues have published in PTJ. Uh, the focus is on uh, M Health and telehealth rehabilitation intervention for adults with Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. Terry, I really enjoyed your study. I'm gonna start by summarizing it for our listeners and viewers mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about it. Great. The purpose of the study that Terry and her colleagues did was to explore the effectiveness, the safety, and the accessibility or the acceptability of a mobile health or what they call an M Health intervention. And it was an exercise program designed to sustain physical activity with adults who have Parkinson's disease. It was a 12-month single-blind clinical trial, um, and it was a comparative effectiveness trial involving 51 subjects with Parkinson's disease. Uh, it, the M Health mediated exercise program consisted of walking with a pedometer plus engagement in a planned exercise-supported intervention with a mobile app application. And they did a comparison over one year with people who were uh, assigned to do walking with a pedometer and an exercise program. What was really interesting, both groups increased daily steps, their uh, moderate intensity minutes of uh, walking, uh, and improved in a six minute walk test. However, in the less active group, between group changes in daily steps and moderate intensity exercise minutes, as well as mobility, were statistically and clinically meaningful, mm -hmm. which is really quite interesting. So Terry, congratulations on your study. My, my first question is, uh, what, what kind of exercise program uh, did you use with these uh, subjects? Mm -hmm. So we know from uh, previous trials that there are a couple of key components of exercise for people with Parkinson's disease. And that includes a progressive resistance strengthening exercise program because we know the importance of uh, strengthening to overcome some of the bradykinesia associated with Parkinson's disease. And the other important component is just walking. Walking is you know, fundamental and it is uh, affected early in Parkinson's and generally not improved via pharmacological interventions. So it's really important to focus on uh, improving walking early in the disease. And we also see a decline in physical activity early on in the disease, despite really mild symptoms. And this suggests that physical activity is declining before the onset of symptoms that would actually you know, lead to even less physical activity over time. Terry, could you talk about how your, ex your intervention differed from standard physical therapy for people with Parkinson's? Yeah, absolutely. So as physical therapists, we spend a lot of time trying to develop the, an effective exercise program for people and teaching them how to do it. And those are really important components. But we, we never really get to the, the big issue, which is how do we get people to keep doing it over the long term? We spend very little time on that traditionally. And so in this program, we had a, a very theoretically based behavioral change program that was part of the actual day-to-day -day intervention. So we spent a, quite a bit of time figuring out, you know, how are we going to change behavior and foster lifestyle changes so that people can successfully engage in this, you know, important disease-modifying, you know, exercise program over the course of the long term. 
And so we did that by, you know, developing a behavioral change program that was, you know, grounded, uh, theoretically grounded, and had a, a very specific framework that we could then uh, sort of implement very specific components of an intervention. For example, you know, we spent a lot of time on spe specific goal setting and action planning and uh, providing feedback and, you know, self-regulation and, the, you know, these key components that help people, you know, sustain an activity over the long term. The, there's a lot of apps out there now and there's a lot of bells and whistles. And we actually worked with this company to develop the key components that were based um, on this framework and are theoretically grounded. So it, 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 I think when you do that, you're, you, you, know, you have a better shot at being successful. Well, I think that's one of the unique features of your study that I found really attractive. But you know, many people aren't familiar with using mHealth applications. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about some of the challenges that your subjects may have run into? Yeah, so when we first started out with this, I got a lot of uh, feedback from reviewers and people that said, well, older people aren't capable of using technology. This isn't gonna work. And when I did focus groups with older people, they were offended by that. <laughs> they were very, you know, even people who, in our trial, who didn't have experience with smartphones or tablets, were very eager and very capable of learning and wanted to be learning this stuff. And, and, and so it actually worked quite well. I mean, there were people that we had to start off by, you know, how do you turn on the tablet? I mean, we had to start at that level, but that doesn't mean they couldn't be successful. And they were successful. Well, I was particularly struck by your finding that the group that was at the lower levels of physical activity really benefited most from the intervention. What do you yeah. see as the clinical and research implications yeah. for your findings? You know, I think there, there's, you know, there's obviously there's a lot of uh, variability, you know, and, and the people come in and, you know, there are people that just need a little bit of help to sustain the exercise over the long term. But it's the people that are doing the least that need the most support. And that's where I think the M Health can come in and really, uh, you know, fill a, fill a much needed gap. You know, it's uh, traditionally in physical therapy, you know, we see people for an episode of care and we discharge them with these instructions and the, you know, exercise program. And, and you know, frankly, m many times they don't do it. And we need to do something different. You know, we ha how are we gonna really work with these people? You know, people with Parkinson's disease live with this disease for decades. You know, one episode of care for, you know, four or six weeks is not enough. And so I think that we need episodes of care, you know, sort of bouts of physical therapy that are, uh, you know, let's say a couple of times a year, every six months over the course of the disease. And then the M Health can be the sort of connection from, to, you know, from the therapist to the patients in that interim period. So there's always a connection. And then, you know, it allows you to collect data through the app and to monitor people remotely. And when they come back in, you already know what they've been doing. <laughs> And you know, we heard a lot from people about the accountability. When they, they knew they were coming back in and they knew we were gonna remeasure them. You know, we were gonna do that six minute walk test again. And you know what? They wanted to know what their six minute walk test results were. And um, you know, and that, that, that really you know, made them wanna stick with the program. Well, I wanna thank you, Terry, for sharing your thoughts with us today and also for publishing your article in PTJ. I encourage uh, viewers and listeners to take a look at Terry's article uh, in, in the Physical Therapy Journal as well as the other articles uh, that month. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, and thank you both. And like I said, you know, PGJ has a new app. PGJ does podcasts like this, so make sure you subscribe to those, uh, download those, and subscribe and listen and can consume PGJ. It's one of the great benefits of being an APJ member. Uh, for Terry Ellis and Alan Jetty, I'm Jason Bellamy. We're doing more broadcasts like, broadcasts like this from CSM 2019, and I'll catch you later.